South Africans don't like smart homes, and I think there are a lot of reasons for this. Learning new things and long and difficult maintenance. And more specifically, smart home products that are developed generally don't solve South African issues. We've got a smart home, and, and it's packed with a lot of uh, smart technology, but the most important technology that we have is definitely the ones that keep our family safe. This is a South African company called Olam, and they've invented a new way to turn your existing alarm system and make it smart, making your home alarm system that you've got more useful and make you safer. We've been using Olam for about two years now, so I've had some time to come up with some thoughts about it, and now we're in a place where it breaks my brain that most alarm systems that we have developed aren't like this. Old school alarms aren't only difficult to understand and set up, they also come with a lot of limitations. When the alarm is activated and you're not at home, there's no way to deactivate it unless you're at home. You only know that the alarm is going off when a private security company that you do void or whatever decides to get in contact with you, if they can even get hold of you depending on where you are, and you don't know specifically where it was triggered. For instance, a side beam where a cat usually trips it. You're pretty certain that it's not an intruder or if you've got cameras so that you can see what's on the property and it's a hardy dog or worse. Or if you forgot to set your alarm and you're out. Or worse, away on holiday and then there's no way to turn around and come back home and activate your alarm. And of course, there's the ridiculous method of setting the alarm and running out in 30 seconds as the beeping indicates how close the alarm is getting to being set. Now, every South African knows this feeling. We all know the bomb diffusing scenario every time that we leave home. And lastly, old school alarm systems have panic buttons, but there's a limited amount of them lying around the house and you've got to pay for extra ones of them. And you often forget where you've put them and sometimes they run out of battery. So it becomes a huge security risk. Olam addresses all of these problems, and I'm going to run by how we've been using it in our house for the past couple of years. So how does it work? The Olam Pro 4G Communicator is a device that connects to an existing alarm system if you've got one that's compatible. I'm going to list all of them in the description of the video so that you know and can see whether your alarm system at home is compatible. But to be 100% honest, I didn't know what alarm system we had before we even barked on this journey. Most alarm technicians and private security just saw my install one. <laughs> that's, and that's the one that you've got now. Luckily, Olam has quite a wide range of, of compatibility and of, of devices that it works with. And if you're struggling here, just dropping them a line will help you identify it in seconds. We've got a Paradox alarm system. It's got this ancient relic of a controller, so I was doubtful at first that it was actually going to work. But fortunately, it works and it works well. The Olam Pro connects directly into the alarm's motherboard and you're just about set. It'll power up and you're going to have to connect it with Wi-Fi to your router. There is a 4G backup SIM card uh, to make sure that you're always up even during load shedding as long as your alarm's backup battery is working, of course. Again, solving South African problems. Once connected, you'll download the Olam app that's available on both iOS and on the Google Play Store. So no matter what device you've got, you can still activate it. Set up your account and connect your Olam Pro device to your account. Don't stress too much about this process. Often the technician who comes around to install it, if you are struggling, will come and help you do that. If not, it's super easy. We've got two in our house, one in the garage with the Olam link, and the other on our Paradox board inside. You access these from the drop-down menu at the top of the screen inside the app. On our main Olam Pro inside the house, we've partitioned the home into an outside section and an inside section. This allows us to arm different areas of the house depending on what we're doing. So maybe we're taking an afternoon nap and just want the outside beams armed, we can do that. Or someone is working in the garden while we're away, so then we can leave the outside disarmed and exclusively on the inside of the house. Depending on your alarm's motherboard, you'll have different ways to partition your property. So check with the installer. This interface quickly becomes the main interface of your alarm system with a more intuitive way of working with your security system than that dumb keypad controller. Although that still operates, don't worry, it doesn't completely replace it. It's replaced it for us because it's much better using our phones. Here you can bypass different sensors on your property if one is malfunctioning for instance or run out of battery like if you've got beams that run out of battery you can name the zones and see which ones are active or inactive so now you don't have to walk all around your house looking for an open window you should just see it on your zone grid 
caddy to I know that you can see what zones are, are going off on your alarm pad, but they're all just numbers. And if you don't memorize the numbers or have a directory next to your thing, it's hard to work out where that is coming from. And again, you have to get up and attend to that keypad. But if you're up a house, you don't have that luxury. So an app is really important. The panic button is always visible on the app's main screen, even when you're just loading into the app. So you always have access to it, no matter what's going on. On the bottom right, you have a handy activity feed so you can gauge a timeline of any activity that's happened on your property and a list of emergency contacts so that, you know, in an emergency, you've got access. It's designed to be the go-to security app. Something happens, open it. For added security and I think really necessary, you can activate biometric authorization so a bad actor won't intentionally disarm your house for instance, if they've stolen your phone. Everyone in your household that needs to have access to your alarm system can do so through the app by allowing you to add them as users. You can even add temporary users. For example, if you've got a visitor staying at your house for the holidays, or if your nanny needs to have access uh, to your alarm system, or you're renting out an Airbnb. You literally have full remote control over your security system from your phone whenever and wherever. But Olam is so much more than just a fancy Olam interface controller. There are some exciting features that they dropped that made us connect a second Olam Pro 4G up in our garage that's connected to something called an Olam Link. It's another device that they've got. Both Olam Pros actually talk to each other wirelessly as long as you have your main Olam Pro connected to the alarm system inside on your motherboard or on the, the security box. It'll feed info from wherever these satellite devices are. The Olam Pro in our garage is connected up to both a garage door so that we can remotely open it and close it with the app and you can add one to your front gate motor as well if you if you put access to it. And our electric fence, which is Nemtech, and it, this, this, this electric fence is supported by Olam. This is connected to an IO port and relay extender called the Olam Link. Our electric fence is now integrated into the Olam dashboard as a zone. So if it's triggered, you know where an intruder is coming from, but also you can control it from your phone. You can deactivate the fence or activate it and you can change the voltage mode, enable and disable the siren and strobe and bypass the alarm when you're getting it serviced. We have tons of geckos on our property that get caught in the electric fence in the middle of the night which makes an extremely loud and annoying clicking sound. So instead of getting out of bed, disarming it manually in the garage, like I'm in Jurassic Park and removing the gecko, I just disarm it for a couple of minutes until the gecko falls off and I can rearm the electric fence then straight from my bed. I use this all the time. It's a huge time saver and it maximizes just my, my comfort in general. I can just go back to sleep. Also, sleep here, I'm very arachnophobic. So no one wants to enter the garage and not just that's not kind of, that's just not an ideal situation here's how it's helped us like i said earlier we can't live without it because it's made our home security so much easier and safer we quarantine our entire perimeter with motion beams every square inch of our exterior property is completely covered if for some reason our, our fences are bypassed for instance we will still have the longer off of people jump in so we wait until we're at our front gate and the front gate is closed when we're leaving the house before we actually set the alarm. It's basically our security cocoon. If we set the alarm when we're inside the property, we will trigger it. This isn't something that we can actually do with the old school keypad alarm setup because we still have to set it and then run out and then make sure somebody else is in the car. It's, it's a huge rigmarole. We'll chop the beams on the way out. Another example is that we've been on a hike where our alarms have gone off and on our cameras, we've seen that there's like a hardy dog on the lawn where the beams are tripped. So we can see the area, where the beams are tripped and we can see that there's a massive hardy guard there. That way we can confirm to its security that it's all good, that everything's fine. We can disarm and then rearm the alarm so that we don't have to rush back home and have the alarm going off so all the neighbors are annoyed until we get there. And also with load shedding, that alarm going off is gonna like kill the battery for the alarm system. Another example that I like to explain to people is that when a delivery person comes through and has a parcel, I can in instruct them through our smart intercom to go inside. I will then disarm the house and get them to drop the parcel off on the property a little bit further away by a corner or something. And then I'll be able to watch them leave, close the gate, and then rearm the house. I have stories about how the panic button on the app has saved many lives because the best panic button, as I keep on saying, is the 
panic button that you've got on you. And that panic button will alert your private security because it's connected to your existing alarm system. Just a quick disclaimer here, not all security companies are compatible with all the Olam Pro's features. It'll emulate everything that's happening on your alarm system. But for instance, some security companies don't recognize the panic button. So if the alarm goes off and it trips, that's great. You'll get your, uh, your private security will come out, but they might not have integrated the panic button. That won't work. You still need that remote. It's still valuable though, but it's something that I would keep hitting my private security uh, company about if they didn't have it. Maybe send them this video so they can get a swift kick of the butts. There is a once-off cost of around 1,200 Rand at the time of making this video and afterwards a monthly subscription that can be as low as 52 Rand a month if you go for a 36 month subscription. This covers app development and the 4G services that it integrates and you can activate the subscription to your armed response provider or directly through the app itself. It's completely worth it. Security is always worth spending money on. I'll add all the pricing in the description, a link to download the app and a link to the Olam Pro itself so that you can check it out for yourself. In fact, let me give one of these Olam Pro 4G communicators away. That link I'll throw in the description as well and I'll include it as a pinned comment below this video. Like I said at the start of this video, smart tech generally isn't meant for South African homes and doesn't solve South African problems, but Olam does. Not only is it refreshing in the tech space, but it's also helpful using technology to address one of South Africa's biggest problems, crime. It's so useful that we can't live without our Olam ecosystem. And I'm sure that soon you won't be able to either. I'll see you in another video. Cheers.